Hey, welcome back to another Blender tutorial. So your model's finished, got a nice material setup, but it just looks way too clean and artificial. Adding imperfections and weathering can help boost the aesthetics to the next level. This video will be going over the creation of several different masks for adding quick procedural weathering effects to your models. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to be using this Hermes statue model from TurboSquid. The link will be in the description. Let's say you have a wooden tool or a copper or marble statue or any mesh with surface texture and you want the crevices to have extra dirt and grime since they would be shielded from casual cleaning and the ridges to have a weathered and worn look from years of handling or wear and tear. And you can do this with a mask to mix in different materials. There are two ways to do this, one is better than the other, we'll start with the simple method first. Using an input geometry node, we can run the pointiness output through a map range node, bring the from min value to around a 0.5 and adjust for contrast. Running this through a color ramp node better demonstrates the effect. Adjusting the to max value will control the strength of the mixing. This is the quick and dirty way to achieve the effect. It has a lower quality since it just takes the mesh geometry and angles at the vertices into account. They need to have actual geometry. Adaptive displacement doesn't work and it can have weird results depending on your topology. The next method gives a much better result and works with procedural displacement. Taking an input ambient occlusion node and inverting the output we get the first part of the mask. Set the distance as needed for your model size and desired result. We can then multiply this with the noise scaled to your preference to add some texture and variation. If your model has non-uniform dimensions, like it is taller than it is wide, make sure you use object coordinates since the default or generated coordinates will stretch a 1x1x1 scaling to fit your model resulting in stretching. And finally, add in a multiply node to adjust the factor strength. You can use this as a mix factor between your base material and a darker, rougher dirt material to add in some grime. Duplicating the setup and checking inside on the AO node, you now have the mix factor for ridge weathering. A simple way to achieve a nice effect is to duplicate your base material, decrease the roughness a bit, and lighten the color with a brightness contrast node to simulate wear. Comparing this with the pointiness map, you can see the huge quality improvements at the cost of speed since it needs to ray trace the ambient occlusion masks. You can lower the samples in the AO node to speed it up at the cost of quality. Adding in some dust can really help with the extra realism and it's actually fairly easy to do. Starting with a texture coordinate node, we separate out the normal output with a separate XYZ node. This isolates the faces based on their normal direction. In this case, we want the faces that point up or positive Z since that is where the dust would fall and collect. Adding in a clamp node to ensure we only get positive values, we can subtract white from the Z channel and use a noise texture as the factor to add some variety. Add a multiply node inline to adjust the strength of the noise effect. Then we multiply this with an input layer weight node and use the phasing output with the blend at around a 0.25. This starts at black from the faces that are directly facing the camera and moves towards white the lower the angle of viewing. This will lower the visibility of dust that is head on since dust becomes more visible the more parallel the angle you view it at. Lower the factor slightly so we don't lose all of the dust when viewed head on. Now you can use this mask as the factor in a mix node using your base shader and a dust shader. For the dust shader, you could just use a procedural material or you can get some textures from the internet. In this case, I'm just using a Voronoi run through some math to isolate flex and a color multiplied by a noise for the base. So let's say you have a boot or something that could be getting dirty near the bottom. An easy way to add some mud or dirt material is by using a mask based off the texture coordinates. Again, using a texture coordinate node and running the object coordinates through a separate XYZ node, take the Z channel and flip the sign, which we can do by multiplying by negative one. We then add back on to adjust the offset. You can multiply a noise with the Z channel before modifying to add some variety. Bring the value back up with a multiply node and then multiply again with another noise to add some texture to the mask. One final multiply node to control the strength and contrast of the mask. But check clamp on this since we don't need any values above one for mixing in a dirt or mud material. Adding some scratches is a little more complex but easy enough. Starting with a Musgrave texture, we control T to add some mapping, stretch it by increasing the X scale to around 10, and switch to object coordinates. Increase the lacunarity and decrease the dimension. You can see the noise detail within the noise. Run this through a color ramp or map range node to isolate some scratches. Add a Voronoi set the distance to edge, mix this with the coordinates to add some hard bend to the scratches. Increase the mix factor a bit to soften this effect. Add a noise and lower the scale a bit. Mixing this again with the object coordinates before the Voronoi, add some curvature to the scratches. Bring the value down a bit to increase this effect. Holding control and right click dragging over the vector connections, we can condense them down into a reroute node. And drop in another mapping node so we can control the rotation. We can then plug this mask output into a bump node and plug this into your principal shader. Enable invert to cut into the surface. If you are scratching a procedural height map as your normal, then subtract this from that map before the bump node and don't enable invert. 
You can also use the color ramp output as the factor for a mix shader to mix in a new material into the scratches. So that's it for this first video in a new masking series. I'm planning on creating more and there will be more videos detailing the creation and application process for those when I have some more ready, so keep an eye out for those in the future. There will be a link in the description to download all of these examples if you want to play around with them. I encourage you to try them out in your projects. Be sure to tag me in anything you can make with these. I'm always glad to see what the community can create. Until next time, see ya.